today the European Brain Council, together with uh, its French and Belgian counterparts, we organized an event in Strasbourg in the framework of the Brain Awareness Week in order to reach out to MEPs on the importance and the societal challenges that brain disorders represent to our society. I really hope that at the end of this morning we will all agree on one point, that is to say on the importance of fully supporting neuroscience, brain research in general, in all member states and in Europe. But brain disorder prevalence is increasing and the health budget for brain disorders exceeds that for cardiovascular disease, cancer and diabetes all put together. So a better understanding of the causes is a necessity to improve treatment and prevention. Each brain disorder, it doesn't matter which, each of them, each of the 19 that we study, is a tragedy. It's a tragedy for our society, it's a tragedy for families, for caregivers, for patients, for all of us. So we need to address collectively all of them. It makes me very, very uh, hopeful uh, what you have explained because uh, I do not need to talk uh, diplomatic uh, language. Uh, I do not trust in the member states' uh, coordination uh, uh, capacities. And it needs a strengthening. The London School of Economics has repeatedly demonstrated that investing in research and psychiatry yields the highest rate of, rate of return of all fields in medicine. It's close to 37%. And this is why we strongly ask Europe to support more than they have done for FP7 research in psychiatry, especially when you look at the comparison between the investment made by FP7 in psychiatric disorder by comparison to the cost, it's exactly the reverse that should be done. So I think to, to continue to have this push, maybe to coordinate ourselves more, uh, the European Parliament has always been a very strong supporter of research as a whole. And, and going forward, we really need that support to continue. We may be facing a difficult situation with budgets in the coming years. The European Commission has its unique selling point uh, with respect to research is the European dimension. And very often uh, we quote this figure, which is perhaps not very precise, and it varies from area to area. But we like to say that um, the 15% of public spending that is channeled through the European Commission's federal programme probably accounts for about 80% of collaborative research in Europe. We have uh, uh, today a very important top-down message to be conveyed to Member States is please, no barrier for early detection. It's crucial. It has been stressed by the different speakers. Because early detection means early intervention. And early intervention means postponing the onset of the disease and even delaying the disease uh, itself. Now coming to the value of treatment, which is the European Brain Council project, which is going to play a significant role, I think, in, in, in giving the future to, to recognising the value of treatment as opposed to non-treatment. And the value of treatment study, it builds on a previous study of the European Brain Council on the economic costs of brain disorders in Europe. Now that we know the cost, we can look and see how that cost can be reduced. And the report gives a solid estimate of that cost. And it represents 40% of the 800 billion that brain disorders cost every year in Europe through indirect costs alone. Poor explanation about what are, are psychiatric disorders, increased <coughs> stigma, increased fear of diagnosis, increased poor communication between patients and doctors. And so we really need to improve communication and information. I appreciate the point that the question of communication, especially with the public, is quite a priority. I would say that probably before it was very difficult because we relied a lot about pain, suffering, difficulty, isolation. All those concepts that are very close to our heart as psychiatrists were very difficult to communicate. We are now also having some new type of approach with microRNA. I mean, all those new figures, they're not only new aspects for research, but they're probably also new types for us to communicate because people can really understand what is depression much more in a virtual world rather than just by words saying about suffering and others 
and also for, for these approaches where they're a bit different from just, you know, I'm talking with my psychiatrist, but, but taking from very specific and related to the brain aspect of the disorder, this one would be very nice tools in order to promote this aspect, especially to develop research. We were wondering about how to make the public dream about the beauties of the brain, because we were simply saying, you know, when you consider the investments that are made in uh, space discoveries or, or that kind of things, we are able to make people dream about, you know, uh, satellites going uh, at such a distance that nobody will ever, ever get there. And we have, each of us, in our heads, an organ which is even more wonderful than, than uh, the universe. So, and, and we are not even able to, to realize that. So how do we capitalize about this? The brain is a complex organ, basically acting all our actions, our emotion, our thinking, but it's also uh, guiding all our body function. If we are not able to understand what is a healthy brain, this is also. So, uh, to, uh, if we want to understand why we are sick, we need to to know how we are working in normal conditions. In recent years, the role of the patient organisation has really ch changed dramatically. And now the patient organisation is really the first point of contact and the best point of contact, I think, between the patient organised between patients and the researchers. So the role of patients organisation is crucial because if patient organisations themselves are advocating for early detection and can put the evidence that early detection is not at all detrimental, but on the contrary is improving the uh, natural course uh, of the disease in terms of a positive treatment, it, 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 it would be certainly a huge, huge gain. So we can facilitate the patient involvement by educating them and the scientists, both sides, on how patient involvement in research is necessary and how it can be done. We can empower patients and society to understand and participate in the scientific process. And we can highlight patient needs and concerns to the scientists. You clearly express the role of science and scientists, but also you remarkably evidence based that the success of the program also depends on patients. Your recommendations are well taken and seriously uh, take your point that as a policy makers, we may contribute in mobilizing more resources and emphasizing sustainability. We need a priority in Europe on brain research at large, really to challenge this incredible problem we are facing. We need to be able to address the brain in a very inclusive and holistic manner. Not only talk about disorders, talking about the healthy brain, but talking about the healthy brain is not only about health, it's not only about science, it's also about education, it's also about employment. It goes to all the daily activities that we are, um, that we are performing. This is a very ambitious document. Uh, we are currently working with our national brain councils on the development of, of national brain plans, setting out that vision. It's, it's a very long journey, but uh, as the African proverb says, if we want to go fast, we go alone. If we want to go far, we go together. So the inclusion of contributions such as yours would be very much appreciated. I really would like you to have the message and bring on the message that this is an emergency and we need to tackle an emergency and we need to respond to the major challenge that we have in front of us in Europe and worldwide for the next year.